Lord one more time. Our God is such a good God, and he is worthy to be praised. He does all things well, and we can trust, we can depend on the God that we serve. I'm so glad about that this morning, uh, because yes, when heaven and earth shall pass away, but God's word shall stand forever. Uh, we have a lot to praise and to thank God for. Good morning to all those who are watching by Facebook Live and those who are listening by conference call. Welcome this morning. I pray that you would have an open heart and open mind and that you would just let God be God today. And that you would just let God be who he wants to be in your life. I, I believe that God is in the blessing business. And whatever you need, or whatever you need, whatever you want, the God that we serve can supply your every need. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And because the God we serve is so good, let us praise God from whom all blessings flow. Oh, my God. 
God a hand clap of praise. I just thank you all the days of my life. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. It's prayer time in the sanctuary. And we serve a God who hears and answers prayer. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. I'll be thankful unto him, and I will bless his name. For the Lord is good and goodly to be praised. It is prayer time at the sanctuary because we know that our God is a prayer answering God. We can take all of our cares, all of our petitions before an almighty God. If there's a special prayer concern or request that you have right where you are, you may be watching, you may be listening, but God sees you right where you are. And if there's something you need God to do, if you would just stand to your feet or lift your hands in the air as a show of your faith in the God that we serve. The first lady is going to come and lead us uh, to the throne of grace. We want to thank God uh, that uh, Sister Tracy Ricks uh, had surgery and the Lord brought her through. Uh, we thank God for his hands. We thank him for guiding the hands of the surgeons. And we pray that she would continually to get stronger day by day. We thank God today. And we pray for Brother Lewis Ricks today. All of our sick and shut in. Uh, uh, Sister Lavinia Goodman and her daughter Dolores Goodman. And uh, we want to keep them lifted up in prayer as well. Let's pray for our nation. Let's pray for the world. So many things going on in the world today. The one constant that we have is that God never changes and that God is still in charge. He's got the whole world in his hands. The first lady is going to come and lead us to the throne of grace. Oh, God, that which is crooked, God, we ask that you would 
make it straight. God, we ask that you would touch the hearts and minds of leaders, God. That they would have compassion for people who are suffering. God, we know that you have the final say, God. And God, we're leaning and depending and trusting in you, God. We thank you, God, for what you're going to do. God, we believe that word that says it's my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek your face and turn from their wicked ways. God, that you would hear our prayer, God, and that you would heal the land, God. We need healing, God. You would move over Facebook. Conference call in the sanctuary. God, there are those who are standing in the need of healing. We ask God that you would touch right now, God. Touch from the top of their heads to the sole of their feet, God. God, where there's aches and pains, God, we ask that you would give relief and comfort. God, we ask that you would just wrap your loving arms around them, God. Be their comfort in the midnight hour, God. God, we'll be careful to give your yes. name all the praise. God, you know oh, every concern yes, that everyone is standing in the need of, God. Well, their hands are lifted, God. Hearts are lifted. We ask that you would do it right now in the name of Jesus. God, because we know you can do anything but fail, God. And for that, we're so grateful. God, we ask you to use our pastor in a mighty way, God. Touch him right now in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for how you have restored him, God. Continue to build him up, God. Continue to speak to his heart, God, and his mind, God. That he would say what thus says the Lord, God. Because, God, we need your word, God. We need your word for direction. We need your word for life. We need your word for clarity. God. God, if we don't hear from you, we don't know what to do. We thank you, God, for your word. God, wherever your word is being proclaimed today, God, we speak forth salvation and healing and deliverance and joy. We thank you, God, that we came in one way, God, but we're going to leave out a different way. God, we're going to leave out with hope, with joy, with Hallelujah, God. We bless your name, God, on today. God, use every servant that will sing to your glory, that will preach until times get better. God, we give your name honor and we give your name praise. Because you alone, God, are so worthy to be praised. We thank you, God, for all that you're going to do. We magnify you. What you've already done, God. And God, we just count it all as done. In Jesus' name, the name that's above every name. In Jesus' name, your name, God. We say thank you. We say hallelujah. And amen. To God be the glory.
Uh, my mother's birthday is tomorrow. She'll be 86 years old. Amen. Uh, and we're celebrating with her that the Lord allowed her to see 86 years. And she's still uh, serving her God. Amen. The God of her salvation. And so we thank God uh, for her. Uh, amen. Uh, the month of October, October is also Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And we do bless God and we thank God for those who are cancer survivors. And we pray for those. Amen. Amen. And we pray for those who have been stricken with cancer uh, that God would touch their bodies and that God would heal uh, their bodies. Uh, uh, cancer is not too hard for God. Amen. Uh, so we thank God that he is a healer today. We mentioned earlier uh, that Sister uh, Tracy Ricks uh, uh, came through surgery uh, just fine. Thank the Lord. Uh, me and the first lady went to visit her, had a real good visit with her. And uh, we thank God that he brought her through. Again, we pray for all of our sick and shut in. Uh, we want to keep all of them lifted up in prayer, along with our bereaved uh, the, the bereaved members of our church, those who have lost loved ones. Amen. Uh, we are working on a video audio project and we've asked uh, uh, you, uh, members and friends of New St. John, uh, to let God lead you in giving us a gift uh, that we might make that possible. Uh, we're, we're moving, we're moving to be back in the sanctuary uh, uh, in January yeah. and we're trying to get the work done uh, before we come back of course uh, we're trying to raise right now about 12 a little over twelve thousand yeah. dollars I think we're up to about forty five hundred yeah. right now we thank those of you who have uh, uh, contributed uh, but those who feel led those who feel led it is a free will offering yeah. and whenever we can get the work done it'll move us uh, quicker, closer uh, to opening up our church uh, that we might worship here in the sanctuary uh, together. I don't know about anybody else. I'm ready. I'm ready, amen, for the doors to be opened back up uh, that we might uh, worship together. Don't forget to vote. Tuesday is, is our opportunity to voice, uh, uh, to sound our voice. We need to go and vote. Yeah. Every person needs to go out and vote. Cast yeah. your vote. Amen. It is crucial in the day that we live in yeah. uh, that you go out and, and vote. Don't, don't ever say that your vote won't count. Every vote counts. Yeah. Uh, if we have a million people that says uh, my vote doesn't count, that's a million votes uh, that didn't uh, 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 make a difference in our state. We need every able body. Uh, please, I'm begging you uh, to go out and vote. So much at stake. Uh, you know, there's so much going on in the world and uh, uh, so, so much craziness going on in the world. Uh, if, if for nothing else, uh, you need to cast your vote. If you you can't uh, you can't complain right. if you won't go to the polls and vote. Uh, that you lose that right to complain. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You need to go out and cast your vote. Remember Wednesday Bible study and remember Friday intercessory prayer. Uh, we want to keep uh, each other, all of us, lifted up in our prayers. If all hearts and minds are clear. Uh, we uh, thank God for all those who help us worship. We thank God uh, for Brother JR. Yeah. Uh, and we thank God for uh, Brother McFarlane of the drums. God bless yeah. you. And we do thank God for Sister Conyers. Uh, amen. And we thank the Lord for Brother Ricks. And we thank the Lord for Sister Ricks this morning. And we thank God for the First Lady of uh, New St. John. Amen here in Virginia Beach. If all hearts and minds are clear, uh, these psalmists are going to come and give us a selection, and then we want to go into the word of the Lord.
We do honor the Lord today. We thank God for Jesus. He shed blood on the cross, his blood that washes and cleanses us from all of our sins. We are so glad that Jesus Christ went to an old rugged cross. He hung, bled, and died. That we might have the right to the tree of life. Didn't have to do it, but he did. Died, the Bible says. They put him in a borrowed tomb, but early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. And because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know who holds my future. Life is worth the living just because he lives. He got up from the grave and back to his father. And one day, he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. We'll be caught up to meet him in the air. And so shall we forever be with the Lord. Isn't that good news? We thank God the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you turn your Bibles to the gospel of St. John, our text comes from that 17th verse. St. John 11 and 17 houses our text. Amen. Also, October is uh, Pastor's Appreciation yeah. Month, and I want to thank God for all of you who blessed us during the month of October. Amen. All of you who thought enough to uh, be a blessing to me and the First Lady uh, to give us uh, gifts. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We give your name glory. Help us to preach your word today that somebody uh, might be healed and delivered and saved and set free. God, we thank you uh, that your word would not return void but that it would accomplish what you intended to yeah. accomplish. So God, thank you right now. Yeah. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Let the people of God say amen. 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 John 11 and 17, when, then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. I want to preach uh, from the topic uh, today, your current situation is only temporary. Your current situation is only temporary. Can you tell somebody that today? Your current situation is only temporary. Come on, tell somebody else. Your current situation is only temporary. The word temporary uh, defined is uh, lasting for only a limited period of time. Uh, it means that it's not permanent. It's not going to last. Uh, I was sent here to tell you today uh, that you would uh, be greatly mistaken if you think that your current predicament of the matter confronting you today is going to last and define the rest of your life. The irony of walking with Jesus, the irony of walking with Jesus is that when you are going through something, it feels like that something will last forever. It seems like you'll never come out of it. No matter how long you've been in it, it's too long. It doesn't feel good when you're going through something. Uh, but I want you to know today that nothing lasts forever. Uh, that if you learn to trust in God, and if you learn to wait on God, isn't that what we must learn to do is to wait on God? That's why Isaiah encourages us and uh, tells us that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Uh, God's people are a persevering people. I need you to hear that today. Uh, that God's people are a persevering people and a perseverance defined means that you continue to do something even though the task is difficult. Uh, difficulty does not deter you from still doing what you need to do. And if you're going to walk effectively with God, you can't let anything stop you from serving your God. You can't let people, you can't let family, you can't let ups and downs stop you 
from serving God. If anything that when you're going through, you ought to make up in your mind that I'm going to hang in there with God. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to wait till my change comes because I believe that my change is coming. Uh, that you're not going to stay in this. And uh, that's why that's why the saying is, I'm so glad trouble don't last always. It doesn't matter what you're going through, and it doesn't matter how long you go through it. If you hang in there and wait on the God that you serve, how do you know that God will bring you out? One of the great joys in reading and studying of the Bible, the Word of God, is that it shares with us stories uh, that should do a couple of things. Uh, the first things these stories should do is give us hope. Uh, Jesse Jackson, keep hope alive. The story should give us hope and encourage us. Uh, those stories should give us strength for the journey. Another thing that those stories ought to do, they ought to uh, increase our faith in the God that we serve. In this life, we will lose a lot. But the one thing you cannot afford to lose is your faith in your God. When we read and study the word of the Lord, these Bible stories ought not be read. They ought not be read with passivity. We ought not be uninvolved readers. We sh should not be unengaged readers. We should not read them as being spectators. Uh, but we should read them and study them and gain strength from that story. Knowing that the same God that brought the early saints out of all their predicaments, out of all their dilemmas, is the same God that can bring and will bring you out. Can I say that again? When I read those stories, it reminds me of God's greatness. It reminds me of God's power. It reminds me of God being a deliverer. And it reminds me that the same God that brought them out, he is able to bring me out. That's why you should have a praise on your lips today. And you should be thanking God already because you know that the battle is already won. You know that the warfare, that God is in charge of your life. And whatever you're going through, God is able to bring you out. You ought to thank God that today I believe I'm coming out. You ought to thank God today that whatever the devil brought, whatever the devil thought he had me, that my God is still able to bring me out. What the early believers went through was real. But what they went through was life threatening. They were real trouble. They were in real trouble going through real trials and tribulations. Uh, they had real enemies uh, and they had real haters in their lives. Uh, they were being used, the haters were, and the enemies were uh, uh, being used to try and drive them out of their minds, uh, to try to drive them crazy uh, and to discourage them from putting their faith in their God. Uh, but what they did not know know was that they were really driving them to call out and to plead to the God of their salvation for deliverance that God would in fact set them free. All times their enemies were bigger than they were. You remember David had an enemy. His name was Goliath. And Goliath, 13 foot tall Goliath, bigger than David. David could not even wear all of the armor they wanted him to wear. But all David had was a slingshot and five smooth stones. And I'm telling you that 
whatever you're going through, huh, all you need is the rock. Huh, you need the rock that is Christ Jesus. Huh, the Bible says that even though that Goliath was bigger than David, huh, I heard somebody say that David said, Goliath, huh, you better go Goliath down before I knock you down. Huh, and the Bible says that David was able uh, to knock Goliath out, red up, cut his head off. Huh, uh, because no weapon formed against the child of God huh, shall be able to prosper. Huh. It looked like sometimes that the enemy was stronger uh, than the people of God. Huh. When we look at Jericho, the Bible says the walls of Jericho huh, were so wide and so thick uh, that nothing was supposed to get in uh, and nothing was supposed to get back out. Huh. Uh, but God told the people of God, huh, if you march around the wall, Six days and don't say anything. One time, march around the walls huh, for six days. Huh, but the seventh day, huh, when you march around the walls, huh, shout with a great shout. Huh, that's why whenever you come to the house of the Lord, huh, you should come with a great shout. Huh, but don't let anybody steal your praise. Because huh, nobody knows like you know. Huh, what God has done for you. Huh, you ought to open your mouth and make some noise. Huh, because the one thing the devil never likes huh, is for the child of God to make some noise. Huh, now that's why New St. John is going to be a noisy church. Huh, do you know when people watch our broadcast, huh, the one thing they say to us is, huh, it sounds like a whole lot of y'all in there. Uh, well, it's not a whole lot of us. Uh, we just don't mind praising the name of our God. Uh, and when God has brought you from a mighty long way, uh, when God has done great things for you, uh, you can't help praising uh, and glorifying uh, and magnifying uh, of the name of the Lord. Uh, oh, come on, look at your name. And say, neighbor, I don't know what you come to do, but I come to praise the Lord. I come to clap my hands. I come to stomp my feet. Oh, come on, ain't nobody looking at your Facebook watching. Come on and clap those hands and give God glory today. The Bible says, when they marched around the walls and shouted uh, with a great shout, uh, the walls of Jericho uh, came tumbling down. Uh, and I don't know about anybody else. Uh, I've made up my mind. Uh, I've decided uh, I'm going to praise my God uh, until the walls uh, come tumbling down. Uh, give somebody else a virtual high five uh, and say, come on, neighbor, uh, help me praise my God. Uh, help me lift him up. Uh, help me magnify him. Uh, he's worthy uh, uh, to be praised. Uh, uh, the enemy was sometimes stronger, uh, uh, sometimes bigger, uh, and sometimes they were even uh, outnumbered. Uh, uh, there is an Elijah uh, 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 going under, uh, uh, going against uh, uh, 400 prophets of Baal uh, uh, and 400 prophets of Asherah. Uh, uh, he was outnumbered, uh, uh, but the God he served uh, uh, knew how to bring him out. Uh, 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 knew how to deliver him. Uh, uh, and when he called on his God, uh, uh, Elijah got the victory. Uh, uh, I'll come to tell somebody today uh, uh, that the victory is already yours. Uh, uh, I know it doesn't look like it. Uh, uh, I know when you look at your situation, uh, uh, it doesn't look good. Uh, uh, it doesn't sound good. Uh, uh, but if you hang in there uh, uh, and hold But your joy uh, is coming in the morning. Uh, and many times, uh, uh, the people of God, uh, uh, they found themselves uh, uh, in hopeless situations.
situations, in dire straits, there they were, in times of unseemly not knowing what the outcome was going to be. But two things we can learn and glean from their lives, that no matter how bad it looks, no matter how big the enemy is, no matter how hard the situation seems, no matter how dire your situation looks, no matter how impossible or how hopeless it looks today, my God and your God has the real power and he's got the power to bring us out. And all I came to tell you today is that no matter what you going through, it's only temporary. Come on, turn and tell your neighbor. It's only temporary. Oh, come on, I can't hear you. I give him a virtual high five and say, neighbor, what I'm going through, what you're going through, is only temporary. Oh, well, my Bible tells me that the race isn't given or to the swift or to the strong, but to them that endures to the end. And understand today that it didn't come to stay. It came to pass. I look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor it didn't come to stay. It came to pass. Moses, the children of Israel in Egypt 400 years. But it was not real. It was not real. But it was temporary. Daniel in the lion's den going through sleeping all night with the lion. It was real but temporary. Of the three Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace, the fire was real. The furnace was real but temporary. Of the widow of Zarephath, no food left. Her predicament was real but it was temporary. Of the woman with the issue of blood who had been had that issue for 12 long years. The issue was real but it was temporary. Of the woman bent over and could not bring herself up. Her situation, it was real, but it was temporary. My Bible lets us know that if you hang in there with God, what you're going through may be real, but it's temporary. When we look at our text today, we see three people, Martha and Mary, who had a brother by the name of Lazarus. Lazarus had gotten sick. And when Lazarus got sick, they sent word to Jesus. You know how we do when somebody gets sick. All we know to do is to take them to God in prayer. They notify the Lord. And I love the way that they phrase the notification. Lord, the one whom you love is sick. We need you to come and heal him. Lord, help me today. Now, maybe Martha and Mary, they felt they had a special privilege because Jesus was often by their house. He would stop there. They would feed him there. He could rest there. And so they felt when their brother was sick, they had an inside track to the Lord. The Bible says they tell Jesus, the one whom you love is sick. The Bible says that instead 
of Jesus coming, immediately he took his time. Let me tell you something about God. I've learned over time that my time and God's time are two different times. You can't hurry God. He's a God you can't hurry. He may not come when you want him. But how many know that he's always right on time? And the Bible says that Jesus took his time. The Bible lets us know that after a few days, after wrangling with his disciples, Jesus decides to go to see about Lazarus. But by now, Lazarus is dead. Lord, help me. And there's nothing more permanent than dead. Dead is dead. It's all over when you're dead. The Bible says that when Jesus got to town, he sees a commotion. He sees Martha and Mary. When Martha hears that Jesus is in town, she gets up and she goes to meet him. But her sister Mary is probably hot. She's probably hot with the Lord because her brother has died. And she's probably thinking, we fed you, we let you rest, and now you let our brother die. So Mary, she doesn't get up, but she sits in the house. The sisters hide. And now you know what we say. You shouldn't get mad with God. But every now and then, you'll find yourself in a situation that you don't understand. And you say, God, why me? God, why did this have to happen to me? And we don't always understand why God does what God does. But the Bible says that for whatever the reason, Jesus did not come and Lazarus died. He comes to town and he speaks to Martha and he sees how upset Martha is. And he tells Martha, your brother shall live again. And listen to Martha. Martha knows some scripture, y'all. Martha says, I know he shall live in the resurrection. And Jesus said, well, excuse me, sister. You don't know who I am. But I am the resurrection. I am the life. He that believeth in me, although he were dead, yet shall he live again. The Bible says that he says to Martha, show me where he's buried. Show me where the grave is. The Bible says that Lazarus by now, in our text says, he's been for four days and after four days probably now he's stinking in the grave Lord help me now and the one thing that I love about God it doesn't matter how stinky your life is it doesn't matter how smelly your life is how many know that God is able to make something beautiful out of your stinky, smelly life. Uh, come on, give your neighbor a virtual high five and say, neighbor, I'm so glad that God stepped into my stinky stuff. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within. Seek it to rise no more.
it, it's temporary. Yes. I, I was I was driving and looking. And the trees are starting to change color. Starting to fall off the trees. And the weather is changing. It's, it's getting a little cooler now. As hot as it was, the temperatures are changing. The daylight is changing. It used to get dark 8.30. Now, like 6 o'clock. I'm sitting in the house. House dark. I wonder why the house dark at 5.30. Because I'm so used to not turning that lamp on till around 8, 8.30, 9. Daylight's changing. We, we can learn from, we can learn from what God has given us. That's right. That seasons do change. No matter what the season is. Seasons do change. <laughs> and I don't mind telling you, I, I, it's been a rough season for this preacher. I'm telling you, it's been a rough season for this preacher. But I'm encouraged today because I know seasons change. And no matter what you're going through, that's right, that's right, that's right. If you hold to God's unchanging hand. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. He'll make it all right. God will make it all right. But you got to persevere. When, when, you know, there's a saying in the world, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. That, that ought to be the signature of the child of God. When the going gets tough, we, we, we don't throw in the tap. We don't talk about going back. But we, we keep moving forward. Because a change is coming. So pray till your change comes. Praise him till your change comes. Worship him till your change comes. Serve him until your change comes. Oh God, I thank you today. I thank you. That a change is coming. My season is about to change. My season is about to change. Yes, God, thank you. Your predicament, your situation is only temporary. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Oh, easy. Oh, 
thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen and amen. God bless you today. God bless you today. That's right. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Give God a hand clap of praise. Say. 
send to our church to help us uh, to take care of the repairs and the upkeep uh, that we need in order that we might uh, come back in church and that we should that, that we might be able to worship God in spirit and in truth. And I want to thank you in advance uh, for how what you said. Whatever you said, God bless you. Whatever you said. God bless you. Whatever you say, God bless you. And we can promise you it will be put to good use. Amen. All things come of thee, O Lord.
The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Let the church sing. Thank you. 